Hey everyone, John from Bike Fit Advisor. So when I talk to my clients that come in for bike fits, often I run into the rider that just works way too hard on their bike all the time. I always say it as they spend way too much time in the middle. Well, what does in the middle mean? Well, let me show you. Well, if we're looking at this is a really basic graph of power output by a cyclist. And over here on the y-axis, we have the, the amount of time, the number of minutes that they can spend at a given power output. So for at 50 watts, they can spend 600 minutes or about 10 hours. And of course, you know, this is going to vary between people, but this is just a very rough, rough drawing and estimate of this. As we get to a, a hundred watts, we get to about six hours, 200 watts, about four hours. And then there's this precipitous drop down here at around 250 watts. And this is a really common number for this and this is actually this rider's particular threshold we use this threshold as our line of demarcation there's this small sliver of effort just below our threshold that we call the middle that does not help us nearly as much as uh, working at or above the threshold does so why is the middle bad it just doesn't have as great a benefit for our fitness, whether we're a trained athlete or not. There's a lot of research to support the polarized training method, which is the idea of staying out of the middle. Polarized meaning we either spend a lot of time here in this very easy range down here or in these very high end ranges up here. And we stay out of this middle area, this between threshold area or just below threshold area, I should say. For instance, there's this 2004 article that says that elite athletes spend most of their time training either far above or far below their threshold. Now, not everything that works for professionals and elite athletes is gonna work for everyone else, but there's this article from 2012 shows the polarized training method to be superior to threshold training method for experienced cyclists. And then additional ones that show that recreational athletes also show greater improvement on the polarized training method. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are dozens, if not hundreds and hundreds of more articles that support this idea uh, that polarized training is going to be more effective at getting you to your fitness goals. And unfortunately, this green, this middle range is where if you have, for instance, say an hour and a half to get a ride in, you can spend the entire time in the middle and feel like you've done something. So it's a very seductive effort. The problem is that spending a lot of your time here does not bump up your efficiency at these higher efforts, which many of us do have to use when we're in competitions or when we're just trying to complete a ride in a, on a difficult course. So again, going back to that hour and a half or 90 minute workout, if you just go kind of as hard as you can for that 90 minutes, you're not even going to get to threshold because again, your threshold is where you can do about 45 to 60 minutes at. It's going to take a bunch of recovery time to recover from that 90 minute effort. A better alternative would be to spend much of that 90 minutes riding in this very easy range over here. And perhaps after a 30 or 40 minute uh, warm up in this range, you might come over and do some high intensity efforts, perhaps at 400 watts, you might do one minute efforts with two to three minutes of recovery and then repeat this effort and recovery sequence you know, four to six times. Finish the workout back in this very easy blue area down here and you've got yourself a polarized workout. It can be as simple as that. This type of polarized workout has been shown to produce a greater training effect and it'll let you live to fight another day since you've only really loaded your legs and your lungs with around five minutes of significant effort, which you'll recover from pretty quickly. And it's this recovery where we get the most benefit day to day because when you're in a training program, if you are polarizing, you're not inducing a, a, a recovery load that's so high that you then carry it significantly into the next day. If you're carrying negative recovery forward, it's going to catch up with you and your subsequent training days are less effective. So I, in my experience and what the research bears out is that a tr is polarized training will really allow you to train better day in and day out. From a bike fit perspective, training in the middle leads to a compromised posture on the bike. Training on negative recovery can easily lead to overreaching, if not overtraining. And in both situations, they lead to poor pelvic stability and scapular control. And these are the two most common postural problems that I see on the bike. Overreached athletes will often begin to experience more saddle and hand issues on the bike as their power output slips and their balance gets thrown off. So keep your efforts on the bike varied and out of the middle. Not only will you find that your fitness improves, but your posture on the bike will as well. 
By the way, check out the link in the description below if you're interested in a few more examples of some polarized workouts. And coming up, I'm gonna do another video on posture on the bike and what is expected of the rider. So we'll go through some of the real um, important uh, postural re uh, recommendations that I give to people almost on every single bike fit and uh, how they can affect you and improve uh, your general enjoyment on the bike. So I'll see y'all next time. Thanks.